is the role of religion in our ever-changing world? From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Issues of Faith. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Issues of Faith. I'm Ben Hall. We are talking with best-selling author and host of a national radio program, Karen Kingsbury. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. This is fun. Uh, Christian author. A lot of people know your work. New York Times bestseller. 25 million books in print. So how do you break into that? In this culture, how do you break into being a, a Christian author like that? Well, I don't think I ever set out to be a Christian author. I was a Christian, wanted to write stories and tell stories. For me, uh, a story is complete when it's got a physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual element. And so I kind of think that a lot of the novelists out there are nervous or afraid or uncomfortable with that spiritual element, and I'm not. So I can include that, and then it was more as I was trying to sell that first novel that I had gone to some of the, the major New York houses where I had written some true crime books, and they said, no, you know, there's no sex in it, there's no language, we don't know where to put it, and a friend said, you should check some of the Christian publishing houses and see, and it, that, I kind of stumbled into it back ways, I guess, that um, it was uh, through the back door that that was the publishing house that wanted it because it was that complete story, and so, uh, yeah, now I embrace that like great you know I write Christian fiction but um, I, what I mean by that is I include the spiritual whether you're running toward God or away from him in this society is it is it tough is it tough to get published would it be tough for a new person mm -hmm. who wanted to break into that world to get published in, in today's culture I think um, people are going to look real carefully at what you're writing, and they're very they're aware that it sells. So there's something to be said for that. I think what makes people want to read my books is there's so much reality in them. Um, not dealing with plastic characters who don't have struggles. They have real struggles. They make real mistakes, and there's not always a happy ending. I think they're looking for that, that you would be true to today's culture, to the struggles that are there for a person of faith and a person like I said, running away from God because they make very interesting characters and very real ones in the midst of a story. I, don't, I think, you know, they always say story is king. And I think it comes down to if you write the great story, you'll get it published even in today's market. And it's interesting, you started out as a reporter, mm -hmm. which I like. And, and your first books were not Christian books. No, yeah, I was. Um, I loved investigative reporting and pouring through court docs and being at trials and, and taking notes and really kind of diving into the reasons behind these sort of crimes that had happened in L.A. And yeah, my first um, my first story was about a girl who was killed by her best friends. They covered it up. It was a twisted story. Went to the jails and interviewed the girl who did the murder. She actually confessed to me, so I actually ended up being a witness. At one point, they had to do the, you know, the journalist privilege. Um, I had to have an attorney from the paper there to represent me, so it was really crazy. But that story, as sad and, and dark as it was, had some redemptive pieces, and I was really drawn to that, and that became my first book. It was called Missy's Murder. Wow, okay. Your most recent books have been about angels, and angels in today's world. And, and you, t you look at an AP poll, mm -hmm. and it says 8 out of 10 people believe in angels. Do you think, in today's culture again, people are more inclined to believe in angels, and they're more skeptical sometimes about God? Definitely. Why, why would that be? Why would they be more open to the idea of angels, and maybe on a wide scale, less so about God. Well, I think angels are directly come to help us. And, you know, anybody wants help. We, we all would like to think that there's someone looking out for us, has our back, and maybe we'll provide a rescue if we're in a dramatic situation or a trauma moment. But God, I mean, now we're talking about someone who has a standard that wants us to live. But we may have to change how we act or how we live and love if we're going to follow God, but an angel asks nothing of us. He just comes and helps us. I think that's easier. And millennials specifically, you know, this younger generation that we see not going to church as much. Yeah. Um, are they more inclined, do you feel like, to believe in angels? Or are they also... No, I don't believe in angels. What, what, what do you I, think? I think there's a little more skepticism now than there might have been. I think that the millennials um, are, are self-sufficient. They like to think of themselves as educated and having the answers and being very culturally uh, forward-thinking. And I, I think they're less likely to even feel like they need an angel looking out for them. But, you know, I, I still, I, among my kids' friends, I still see them liking the idea 
I like the idea that there's someone, maybe who even shows up looking like a person, that's going to help me um, just because, you know, mm -hmm. just because I'm here and I need help. There is that that need that we all have of something greater, mm -hmm. and and whether it is okay, people have believe in God, yeah. or whether it is an aim, it's something greater, right? Yes. And so in your your characters, they are interesting because they don't always believe and they are running from something or maybe they believe but they're not fully convinced themselves I mean so they're, they're very multi-dimensional I think that is so important you know as I'm writing Christian fiction that I'm writing characters that are real that you read and you go that's like me I, I sometimes have a doubt or I sometimes wonder why that happened or why God would allow this certain thing to play out and I, I think that's a, a really important piece to to belief and to faith in our current culture is that those naysayers and doubters are because it's real and so my characters have to have that too the um, angels and sometimes walking. we express that we do we, but we are scared sometimes to maybe say it publicly so we can right. then express that through a character exactly we read it and we say yeah I really resonate with that and and it's really cool I think the angels walking series starts each one of the books so we're on book two now chasing sunsets but they start with the town meeting in heaven with it's a very serious meeting very um, much is at stake and there's a mission to play out there's characters on earth there's people on earth who are going through a hard time in love and desperate matters of the heart and angels two angels are assigned to go and to help and make a difference and accomplish this mission and those angels are on a it's called angels walking so in my fictional world they're out there walking because of what we read in Hebrews 13 that says be careful to entertain strangers for in doing so some of you have entertained angels without knowing it so my characters often don't know it like they don't know that when this person comes along with a message or this police officer shows up and protects or stops some violent crime from happening right at the right moment it's an angel and so we get to know we have a heaven side view as we're reading which is which is also I think fun because we can see hey maybe there's more at work in my life than I knew and so as a journalist then there would be that skepticism and and that kind of thing. it's interesting you've been in both worlds yeah so you were an investigative reporter at one point and then and then you're writing um, Christian Christian novels now what is, what is your sense about angels do you do you believe that they are real or what, what, what do you think well we have a great story like a personal story that really I, I do believe that they're out there that they're real um, we had a situation my dad was ill he hadn't been well for a while and he one day just had a massive heart attack and it looked like nothing he just went to sleep he just was he's in his lazy boy chair and just eyes closed and he was out my nephew at 13 Andrew was at my grandparent you know my parents house he had visiting his grandparents and he said grandma I think something's really wrong with Papa I think he's I think he's really hurt and my mom hadn't even noticed thought he was tired so Andrew called 911 and they walked him through 19 minutes of CPR over my dad who was you know an overweight guy in a lazy boy chair this was not ideal Andrew's 13 he gave CPR when the paramedics arrived my dad was blue and, and just unresponsive didn't, didn't breathe didn't have a heartbeat and Andrew went in the next room and started sobbing and he felt it was all his fault well in the middle of the chaos a police officer runs in goes up to my mom and says do you believe in Jesus and she said, yes, yes, we do, you know, our whole family. And he said, then we need to pray that the power that raised Lazarus from the dead would breathe life into your husband right now so that that young man out there doesn't grow up thinking it was his fault. So this police officer, who they'd never seen before, holds hands with my mom, prays in this powerful prayer about life and being breathing life into my dad. When he says, in Jesus' name, amen, in the next room, paramedics yell out, we have a heartbeat. So that was crazy, and uh, we, we made it to the hospital. We got my dad back for six weeks. We got to talk to him and pray with him and sing hymns over him, and Andrew was the hero. He was the one who helped, he made the difference. But when my dad passed away, my mom said, one of the first people I need to thank is that police officer. So she called the police station and uh, gave the information, and they said, we've never had an officer by that <laughs> name, so. <laughs> and so in the position you're in, radio, a show that's syndicated nationally and and writing these books you must get stories like that I mean Definitely. now that story you just told it gives you chills I mean that's that's remarkable do you hear a lot of others like that 
I do. It's fun. It's fun to go on Facebook. I think one of the things that maybe sets me apart, the, the readers love me because I love them. I really do. I pray for them. I care for them. So I'll go on Facebook and hang out with them for an hour, call it latte time, or we do online book clubs. And I'll ask questions like, how are, you know, what are you going through? What are you wrestling with? And I've asked that question about angels, and it is amazing to see how many people will respond with their very specific story of a person who came into their life at a critical moment with a word of encouragement or with a rescue and um, they have no explanation as to where they went. They disappeared or no one had heard of them or they'd never worked at that hospital. And uh, it's a very common theme that um, these sort of things happen and we don't know. We're left not, not knowing. But to be kind to these strangers because we might even be talking to an angel. And you f that's comforting. It is. It's so comforting to know that it seems to be um, not necessarily respective of where we believe, that God loves us. I mean, he, he loves every one of us, whatever our battle or whatever our stance on Him, He created us. And, uh, and He cares for us and loves us so much that He would send an angel to get our attention or to remind us of how much we're cared for, how much we're loved. And maybe that's a turning point in our lives to go, you know, I need to look into this. I need to open a Bible, see what see what God says. So much in our current culture, I guess, debunks things. It finds, oh, well, that's not true, or it finds fault with this, or it turns us away from the Bible. These kinds of incidents, you feel like th they're not debunked, right. and they, they, they probably do turn people toward faith and the yeah. Bible. Do you feel that? I do. I think one of my favorite things I'm hearing from readers as they read this Angels Walking series is there people who are saying, I haven't been paying attention as closely as I want to be. So as they look back, they're like, I wonder if I missed some moments like that. And rather than just being about the here and now, the going to work and the you know, rise of our, our career or that kind of thing, or paying bills, raising kids, whatever that is, whatever our little life is about, they go, whoa there might be something more to all of this. And then that does raise the next question. What am I going to do about it? And what about the God that, I mean, the angels are just the army of gods. And they're not gods. So what do I do now to find out more about him? And how do I live that relationship so that I can be more aware of where God's working every day in our lives? All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. And I want to get more into uh, the books that you've written, the Angels Walking series and others. Uh, we'll take a break. Be back right after this.